So Brandon, tell us what you got. Yeah, so my name is Brandon Madden. I work at the American School in Japan, teaching physics and biology. And so with me this summer, I've taken a um, SafeCast um, Geiger counter. And it's all about the citizen science. So what we're trying to do is just take readings around the world. And uh, this right here has a Geiger counter on it. So we're getting CPN, CPM and also micro serviettes per hour um, that it's picking up wherever you go. That gets also saved with the GPS location and gets saved onto this SD card. And then once you upload the information to the SafeCast website, it goes onto this map of the world with, um, with uh, like a Google map type interface. And it all started out by people not knowing what the radiation levels were like in Japan. Is it safe? Is it not safe? What are the actual levels? And so this company came along and they started this project where they actually gave these to the mailmen. And so the mailmen were traveling around Japan just doing their routes with these um, on the front of their car or in their bags. And that way they could get accurate readings of the current radiation that was uh, coming out of the Fukushima plant. So yeah, I've been carrying this so far this summer. We took it to Vietnam, uh, Bali, and then up through Greece all the way up to here right now in uh, Bruno, Czech Republic. So tell us uh, about what, what sort of radiation levels you've seen back home in Japan and where, and then where have your peak points been since? Um, most of the time, actually, in the places I've been in Tokyo, they've been around uh, 0.02 microserviettes per hour, which is pretty low. It's just kind of like the background dose. Um, what's really interesting is I, I opened this up on an airplane, and on an airplane you're getting around 0.9 microserviettes per hour, so it's, it's a lot higher, but still not in the dangerous range. When you're looking at a dangerous range, like around uh, Chernobyl or directly in the Fukushima plant, you're looking at uh, 40,000, I, I believe the number was, microserviettes per hour. So really, this is just background radiation that, this is, that I've been picking up over the trip so far. Okay, so can you tell us about its uh, tube, the GM tube, what kind of tu tube it is? Um, let's see, the tube where it's picking it up here. It's a waterproof casing it comes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, it comes in waterproof. Is that like an accessory or? No, it, um, it, it, and it's a do-it-yourself kit. So it oh, comes cool. as a kit and you solder it all together. Um, it takes about six hours to put all the soldering together and then you cross your fingers to make sure it works. It was actually my, uh, my first soldering job. That I so, is it, so is this, this something that you're teaching your students or? Um, yeah, we've actually implemented it in eighth grade. We do a big project on Fukushima and we have about 10 of these in our school. They run about 400 bucks each. And um, so we give them to the kids if they're going on a different vacation somewhere, or if, if they want to be part of adding this information to the website. So uh, how do the kids feel in Japan? So you're in Tokyo, yeah? Yep. And um, how do they feel about what the situation is and when they come back with a really high reading, do they go, oh, look what I found, a hot particle? Um, <laughs> the, I, <laughs> I, the, the only time they really get higher readings is when they're getting a lot closer to Fukushima and especially in the valleys. Uh, it seems like the radiation's been settling out there a little bit more. Um, but really, uh, some of the kids did some projects last spring and the, just the knowledge they're getting about being aware of what the different radiation levels mean and uh, what it means to them, is, it, it's incredible what they've been coming up with. Well, I think that's really proactive of the Japanese government to support this initiative. Yep, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so w what are the, uh, you know, they're, they're essentially using the, the milk delivery men, is it what you're saying? Yeah, so it was actually a private company that uh -huh. um, designed this, again, the, the citizen science. Um, designed by Lionel Bergeret and Peter Franken and Niam Busick. Mm -hmm. So these guys designed it, put it together, and then um, gave it to the post office to, to kind of track down the data. And now um, their website is flourishing with, uh, the SafeCast website is flourishing with uh, people, you know, going out there and doing it themselves wherever they go. Thank you very much for that. Thank you.